Last month, the judge issued a temporary restraining order blocking her from making those appointments without approval from trustees. Hey, Jeff, could be, huh? All right. I, I guess anything else? I get sued all the time. I get sued all the time, y'all. Stop. Dalton, Illinois is turning into the ultimate political soap opera, and all eyes are on its headline making Mayor Tiffany Henier shirt. With lawsuits flying, accusations of corruption, and even a little courtroom drama, it's a small town saga that feels straight out of a Hollywood script. But here's the kicker, this isn't fiction. This is real life chaos, and it's playing out in front of everyone. Let's dig into the wild world of Dalton's political drama, where Mayor Henyard is at the center of it all, stirring the pot and drawing criticism from every corner. I am about to address some things as the supervisor. Uh, there will be no comments, there will be anything, it'll just be me addressing you guys to tell you what's going on. So here's the scene. Dalton's mayoral landscape is heating up, with Henyard, who's earned herself a bit of a super mayor reputation, trying to hold board meetings at Village Hall. But there's a twist. While Henyard stakes her claim at Village Hall, the trustees are holding their own meetings just down the road at Dalton's field house. This isn't just about where to hold meetings, though it's a full-blown power struggle with legal battles, accusations, and backroom drama that seems to grow crazier by the minute. Picture it, Henyard at Village Hall, ready to address a crowd that's, well, not quite there. To with only two trustees present, Henyard doesn't have the quorum she needs to hold an official meeting. The rest of the board, they're down the street at the field house, tackling village business without her. It's like a scene from an action movie where the hero and the villains plot their moves in two separate locations. Only in this case, it's just a chaotic mix up of village meetings. Henyard then makes her way over to the field meeting, only to face boos and jeers as she enters the room. Let's just say she wasn't exactly welcomed with open arms. The crowd's reaction? They're frustrated, shouting, and some are even turning their backs on her. You can feel the tension in the air, and Henyard's mere presence seems to ramp up the intensity. Residents are fed up, and they're making it crystal clear. There's no warm welcome here, only a rising tide of anger that's spilling over from weeks, even months, of confusion and chaos. Here's the point, my my Why the separate meetings? Well, that's where things get even messier. The Illinois Attorney General had a say in this, ruling that Village Hall just doesn't cut it for big meetings. Too small especially for residents who want to see what's happening. Plus, there have been complaints that Henyard's security measures make it almost impossible for the public to attend. So the trustees say they're just looking out for the residents, which is why they moved the meetings to the field house. But Henyard isn't having any of it. She's got her own take on things and has gone so far as to file a lawsuit claiming that Village Hall is where these meetings should happen. Though the lawsuit is her way of doubling down, trying to set the record straight, at least from her perspective, about where official village business should take place. Village board meetings, one held at Village Hall, one held at a park district, and now there's a lawsuit, and I talked to the attorneys for both sides. Now let's talk about that lawsuit. Henyard's not just filing for fun, she's out to prove a point. She wants the court to declare Village Hall as the one true location for board meetings. In her eyes, the field house meetings are illegal, unauthorized gatherings that shouldn't count, and she's suing a whole list of folks, from trustees to the park district, for what she says are their roles in setting up these rogue meetings. For Henyard, this is about taking control, and she's willing to go to court to do it. She's accused the other officials of running meetings behind her back, violating transparency laws and basically undermining her authority as mayor. And it's not just about the venue, it's about a bigger struggle over who really holds the power in Dalton. Also new tonight, Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard is suing some village trustees over Monday's meeting. But here's where it gets even wilder. This feud is about more than just board meetings and legal battles. It's about Henyard's entire approach to leadership, which has come under serious fire. There's a lot of talk about her decision-making, especially when it comes to finances. Dalton, under Henyard's leadership, has reportedly fallen into a deficit, while nearby Thornton Town has a surplus. And guess who's also in charge over there? That's right, Henyard. She's running both, but somehow, Dalton is in the red while Thornton is in the black. It raises a lot of questions about what's really going on behind the scenes and how Henyard's managing her responsibilities. Very appreciative to receive the information today. Uh, we have the best mayor ever. I've been here since 1993. This brings us to another piece of the puzzle, Henyard's attempts to appoint new officials without the board's approval. So we're talking big roles here, a new police chief, a village attorney, and a village administrator. But a Cook County judge stepped in, saying these appointments were a no-go because Henyard didn't follow the proper procedures. So the restraining order was a big deal, blocking her from bringing in these new faces until she gets the green light from the board. 
It's a serious check on her power, and it's left a lot of people wondering what she's really up to. So these aren't just minor roles, they're critical positions that affect the day-to-day -day running of Dalton. To the trustees for their part, seem to be in no rush to approve Henyard's picks. And it's clear they're not thrilled about the way she's handling things. This administration is shameful. Y'all are a disgrace. We're watching the fall of this administration. Yeah, Henyard's bold approach to leadership isn't just limited to appointments. She's also known for implementing policies that many consider heavy-handed high security and security measures that have made it harder for residents to attend public meetings. Critics argue that these actions reflect a leader who prioritizes control over transparency and who may be more interested in maintaining her own power than in truly serving the community. This perceived authoritarian style has earned her some vocal opponents, but Henyard continues to defend her choices, saying they're necessary for order and progress. We called our security firm, we made sure they had ones, and we also told uh, our board to come upstairs due to the fact they had several ways to exit out of the building. Yet, Henyard's leadership isn't without its loyalists. Some supporters claim that she's being unfairly targeted, arguing that her bold decisions are exactly what Dalton needs to shake up the status quo. So they say that her moves are part of a larger plan to streamline Dalton's government and eliminate what she sees as bureaucratic roadblocks. However, with increasing scrutiny and a growing number of detractors, it's hard to say if Henyard's assertive tactics will be enough to keep her in power. The tension between her leadership style and the community's expectations continues to fuel the uncertainty surrounding Dalton's future. This lawsuit, on top of all the other lawsuits, is a waste of the taxpayers' money. And if that wasn't enough to get tongues wagging, let's dive into the allegations of corruption. And Yard's facing some heavy accusations here of financial mismanagement, awarding contracts to her inner circle, even misuse of village funds for personal luxuries. The whole thing sounds like something out of a scandalous TV drama. According to court documents, Henyard's boyfriend even took the stand against her, and his testimony wasn't exactly a glowing review. He reportedly spilled the beans on some questionable spending, saying she used public funds for personal getaways and other non-village expenses. It's the kind of testimony that could seriously damage her case, not to mention her reputation. But the administration can adhere to some financial limits. We're not looking to necessarily his claims don't stop there. He's also talking about contracts handed out to friends and family, saying Henyard bypassed local laws to give her buddies a leg up. And then there are the whispers about bribes. Allegedly, Henyard accepted money from local contractors and developers to grease the wheels in their favor. The boyfriend's testimony is like a bombshell, hitting Henyard from all sides and shaking up her inner circle. But this is just some random rumor. This is a courtroom revelation that's got everyone buzzing. It's hard to believe that Henyard's closest confidant would turn on her like this. But that's exactly what's happening, and it's making an already wild story even more unbelievable. Of court, the judge today declining to hold her in contempt, but did warn her that if she did not follow the ruling, he would. The fallout from all this is hitting Dalton hard. Residents are fired up, and social media is ablaze with calls for Henyard to step down. There's a real sense of betrayal in the air, with people wondering how much longer she can hold onto her office. Henyard's supporters are dwindling, and even those who once stood by her are starting to question her actions. It's a political nightmare, and the consequences could be huge. We're talking about the potential for federal investigations, charges that go beyond local disputes, and maybe even the end of Henyard's time as mayor. If the allegations stick, it's going to be a long road back to public trust for Henyard, and right now, it doesn't look like she's doing herself any favors. And speaking of trust, there's a real concern about how all this is affecting Dalton as a whole. So with all this drama, village business is practically at a standstill. Budgets aren't getting passed, bills aren't being paid, and village services are in limbo. And Yard's feud with the trustees is like a cloud hanging over Dalton, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So the town's financial stability is shaky, and residents are left wondering what's next. They're calling for accountability, transparency, and maybe even a new leader to pick up the pieces. The media is having a field day with this one, too. Kenyard's antics have caught the attention of both local and national outlets, and there's even talk of a TV special or documentary. It's a saga that's too juicy to ignore, and everyone wants a piece of the action. Henyard has become a polarizing figure with some people fascinated by her boldness and others disgusted by her actions. She's the mayor everyone loves to hate, and she seems to be leaning into the spotlight, for better or worse. There's a certain spectacle to it all, with Henyard playing the role of the defiant leader who refuses to back down, no matter what the cost. I want to thank my two trustees, uh, Trustee Andrew Holmes and Trustee Stan Brown, for showing up. As for what's next, that's anyone's guess. Henyard's future is up in the air, and Dalton's residents are watching closely to see how it all unfolds. So will she be able to hold onto her office, or is this the end of the road? One thing's for sure, this story is far from over, and the drama is only just beginning. 
With more court dates on the horizon and a village full of fed-up residents, it's a high-stakes game that could change everything for Dalton. So what do you think? Is Henyard on the brink of a downfall, or will she somehow find a way to turn this around? And what's really going on behind the scenes in Dalton? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and be sure to stay tuned as this wild ride continues, so you won't want to miss what happens next.